With Next.js, we can create a front-end application in the folder app where we got a file routing system every time we are going to create a new folder and add a page.tsx, it's going to create a new route into our app. However, if we create a folder API in here, it's something different that is happening. In the folder API, it's going to create routes for an API, so a backend server that is running on Node, and we can create as much roots as we want, exactly like we do with um, the folders under app for our client application. So basically in here, I'm going to create my first root. It's going to be called root.ts and not root.tsx because it's not tsx that we want to render, but just TypeScript. And in here, if you did some uh, Node.js um, backend um, server before, you would understand immediately how it works. You just create a function that is going to return actually a root, etc., etc. But for those who don't know, we are going to code this first root together. So what we need to do is to export async a function, okay? And here we are at the base of our API. So it's going to be slash API, okay? Um, the thing is that here we got to specify the method because when we call, an API, you can have several methods. And in here, it's going to be directly inside the name of the function. So here it's going to be async function get. So next to here, I got my uh, postman that is running and I got my localhost slash API running. And if I try to call here, we see that nothing happens because I didn't code anything. What I need to do in here is to return a response. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to type return, okay? And here I need to use from next server, the package of next, I need to use next response. It's going to create a response from the server directly for me. So I'm going to import here next, okay, response. So here is going to be next response. There we go. And here I got to import it from where? From next slash server. There we go. And what I need to return is this next response. And actually, I need to call the method JSON from this next response. And let's say that at first we are going to answer hello world. All right, I got my first root, so it's slash API and I got my root in here. So if I try to call, there we go, we've got our hello world. Let's create a subroot. Let's say that we're going to have a subroot that is going to be, for instance, um, let's say it's going to be products, okay. Well, we need to do exactly the same. So I'm going to type a root.ts and in here, I'm going to put all of this here and we've got here, let's say that in my products, I will have instead an array, okay? And in this array, I will have an ID, which is ID one and a name of the product, it's going to be strawberries, for instance. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm going to come back here and slash API slash products, because remember this is the path we created before. I'm going to click on send and there we go, I got my products. Let's get back to the main file of our application and in here in products, I'm going just to remove this. Um, what I want to do now is not to use a get. I would like to use several other methods. So we've got post, we've got patch, we've got put. Well. Every time you want to create a new method uh, through the root, what you can do is just to change the name of the function. So here is going to be post, for instance. Then you will have, uh, let's come back here. We can see we've got put, then patch, then delete, then head, then option, okay? So depending on the method you are going to use, what you will have to do is to create every time a new function for every method that you want to use. Okay, let's stay on post and let's see that what I can do here. I'm going to try to call post and what I would like to catch is a body. So I would like to catch the request uh, when I post here. And what I can use for that is to use the parameter request inside the function post. Okay, so here request is of type request and there we go. So how do I catch this request? Well, just by using this request in here. So let's say that I would have some data and here it's going to be this. I would await to transform my request as a JSON to read the data that I got in here. So let's say that I want to return the data after. And what I need to do, I'm going to post, it's a bit dumb, but I'm going just to post this object, Joe age 12, 
and it's supposed to return to me actually the uh, object that I got in here. So I'm going just to post and there we go. I got my data with uh, name Joe, exactly what I posted. Okay. So to catch the request, you use the request button and the request, sorry, parameter, and you turn it into a JSON object. Now let's say that I would like to have a root and this root would be users. Okay. And uh, inside users, I would have a new folder. And in this folder, I would have a dynamic parameter exactly for the page called user ID uh, in here, okay? So now I got a root API slash users slash, and uh, here, what do we got? User ID. So let's say that I'm going to put a 12 in here and look at this, I got a JSON. And in this JSON, I already have some users locally. And I would like just to fetch the user that we have here, Guillaume, which is number 12. So I'm going to come back in here. And what I need to do is just, I'm going to copy paste this and create a new root, root.ts, okay? And it's going to be exactly the same. And what I want to do, I want to import my data from where, from here, the root. I got my uh, JSON here. And on the request, I would like to catch the parameter. Is that possible? It's absolutely possible. So to do this, what we need to do is to add here a new parameter called context, and I'm going to put any for now. And so we've got the context any, and what we want to do here instead, so I'm going to comment this for now. What I want to do is to deconstruct params from context, because context is giving to us params. So here, what I can catch is params.userID, because we got here the user ID. Okay, so now what I can do is to look for the user. So I'm going to put data.filter hicks. And here I will have params. And remember, it's the name of the, the, the parameter, user ID is equal x.id. But here, my ID here is a number. And here it's going to be a string. So what I need to do is to turn this xid to a string. So to string just to be sure that all the time I will be able to catch this. Okay, so I got it and instead, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just going to remove this. Instead, I'm going to return the user, okay? So here I'm, I put a post, but actually it's going to be a get, it's going to be better. So I'm gonna come back and I'm going to turn this into a get and I'm going to click on send. And what's happening in here, I got my user that is directly here. So it's in an array, I could have done a find. But this is how you catch the params in here. You use actually the um, brackets to create your dynamic root. And then you can use the params dot user ID or whatever the name you're gonna give to. It's going to work this way. I can definitely call my own API from my client side. So let's come back and here on the page, I got a button called call my API and I got a function called fetch from API that is going to fetch directly my API. Okay. And of course I could fetch any routes that will be created in here inside my app. Okay. So I got my headers and what I do is that when I get my response, I turn my response into a JSON and I got my data in here. So here we see that I'm trying to fetch uh, API, but let's create a new root. So I'm going just to use this one at users. So at users, I'm going to create a new root.ts. And you understood that now you will have to get, actually, um, you would have to get uh, every time a root.ts file on every folder. So here it's going to be data and I'm just going to respond this. And actually, I'm not obliged to use the request and the context. Be safe because here, if you deploy your application, this route is going to be accessible to anybody that is going to call your API, okay? You would have to work on the cookies and the authentication system if you want uh, that your route stay private. All right, so we've got this and what I'm gonna do directly in here, I'm going to call API slash users and we're gonna look at the data. So I'm going to click on call my API and suddenly I got my array with the two users that I got here. So you can definitely call your own API from your front-end application for the reasons that you want, but it's totally possible to create a back-end side on your application in Next.js and still running an application on the front-end.